My truest connection to the awe and wonder of nature as a healing place was not awakened in me until I saw it through the eyes of my five-year-old daughter. While well, I had always longed to be in nature, growing up in the suburbs of Chicago just didn't afford me many opportunities to really immerse myself. So when I was 18, I packed up all my things and I moved to Eastern Kentucky. It was total culture shock, but there were trees everywhere. And I was ready to learn everything I could about nature. So I went to college and studied conservation and went on to get my master's degree in peregrine falcon behavior, spending more than a thousand hours on the clifftops of the Red River Gorge and earning myself the nickname Peregrine Lady. Years later, when I became a mom, I was so excited to share all of this knowledge I had accumulated with my daughter. I would sprinkle little nature facts into her life whenever I could. But then one day, we went on a hike with some friends. Ayla, who was always barefoot, ran ahead on the trail and was stopped in her tracks by this soft emerald green carpet of moss. She was an instant ball of excitement and begged me to get onto the moss with her. Now, of course, I was thinking, I don't want to take off my shoes, and my feet will get cold, and our friends are waiting, and we've got to get there. Can we just go? But then I just couldn't say no to her plea. I'll never forget the look on her face when I stepped onto that moss with her. She could tell. I felt it too. She just looked at me like, right, Mom? And she was so right. It was this delight of the senses and this stop time moment of joy and connection between us. I thought it was out there teaching her what nature was about with all of my knowledge and all of my facts. But she was teaching me about what this time in nature was really about. That this bond that we created and shared during the journey was the most important thing. These bonds build trust. They help break down our walls and get us grounded in who we are and who we want to become. That simple outing changed the course of my life. In today's world, children are overprotected, overstimulated, and overdirected. And in a mindset geared towards constantly protecting them from any danger, can our children really discover their own identities? In the noise of overstimulation, have they lost the spaces to really feel their senses come alive and open the door to creativity and imagination and inspiration? How can they show us that they are strong and capable and happy and confident if they aren't given the freedom to do so? My four years as co-founder of our forest school has shown me that nature immersion is a powerful tool to give kids a place to be themselves and test their limits where mental and physical healing benefits abound, and that it's rooted in compassion. The idea is simple. You commit to time in nature and you value it like any other thing in your schedule, and then you show up, rain or shine, hot or cold, and be present. You explore together and share stories. You connect and wonder. You try and you fall down and you fail and you breathe. Richard Louv coined the term nature deficit disorder to describe the pervasive disconnect of our modern culture to the healing benefits of nature, especially in children and marginalized populations. And headlines across all platforms support the growing concern in our culture that children's health has seen a rise in the diagnosis of ADHD, obesity, anxiety, and depression. Coupled with the time spent on technology, some averaging five to eight hours a day, and the decreased time spent outdoors, we just can't help but wonder if there's a connection. So recent studies do actually support that this time in nature is linked to things like lower aggression, reduced stress, better impulse control, greater engagement and learning, better relationship skills, reduced ADHD symptoms, and so many more countless benefits including these critical life coping skills. Furthermore, we often fear what we do not know, and that fear can build walls that keep us from connecting and understanding. We connect 
when we immerse ourselves and engage all of our senses and see and hear and touch and smell. That connection leads to understanding. And those two things come together and blossom into compassion. We begin to take down our walls with nature and each other. I have seen this take hold in my life and those of our community and all these families who are committed to this time in nature. So all of these benefits associated with free play and nature immersion can have a profound difference on the lives of kids in Eastern Kentucky who are often plagued by poverty and reduced access to quality education and programming. Giving kids some autonomy and ability to reduce their stress and have happy, healthy minds, bodies, and hearts can have powerful, lasting changes. In our forest school, we created a wish tree. We invited the kids to share bravely what was on their hearts and minds by writing their wishes on pieces of fabric, and then we decorated the tree with them. One of the teens in our program shared the most beautiful, vulnerable bits of herself on our wish tree. And she struggles with anxiety, but she shared, I wish for the end of suffering, and I wish for a clearer mind. She also shared with us that taking care of kids has really helped. They see you as an important person, and you start to see that in yourself. <laughs> My jaw dropped when I heard these words come out of her mouth for the first time. It's one thing to know that these big moments are happening for our kids, but to hear her articulate self-worth and confidence about herself, that filled me with so much hope. The research supports these personal experiences that we've had, including that pivotal moment for me and my daughter on the trail. That simply placing your bare feet on the ground can be that first step to happier, healthier minds, bodies, and hearts. Thank you. <laughs>